So today my country Morocco won against Portugal in the World Cup. This is the first time my country ever gets to the semi-finals in the World Cup and I was really really happy so I decided to make a tutorial on how to make a football kicking system in Roblox. Also, if you guys want to support me and want to have access to all of the project files, including the one you're watching right now, they will all be available on my Patreon in the Nintendo tier. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a sphere. And I'm going to rename the sphere to football. And I'm going to change the brick color to white. And I'm going to go to the avatar tab. And I'm going to go to rig builder and create a block rig. And I'm going to scale this football. Uh... So that it's the size of an actual football compared to a player. Okay, so I think that's that's good. Now what I'm going to do is go to the avatar tab again. And I'm going to go to the animation editor. And I'm going to select the dummy. And I'm going to hit create. And then we can animate the dummy. I'm going to make a kick animation. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make the player's legs swing like that. And then, after a bit of time, we're going to make... Okay, so I'm going to select the leg. I'm going to swing it back. And then I'm going to copy the first keyframes. And I'm going to go here and paste them in. Okay. That was a bit too fast, so I'm just going to paste them a bit. Something like that. Okay, I'm going to put it back. I think the fast one was better. Okay, that's that's way too fast. I'm going to do this again. Okay, that's good. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is click the three dots over here. And I'm going to go to, public, to uh, set animation priority. And I'm going to choose action. And then I'm going to click the three dots again, publish to Roblox, and I'm going to rename it to Kick Animation. Okay, after doing that, uh, press this button right here to copy the ID. And then just put the ID somewhere. So what I'm going to do is just add a random folder in the workspace, and I'm going to rename it to the ID so that I have the ID stored over here. Now what I'm going to do is um, build the soccer goal. Okay, so I have this uh, model right here. I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And I'm just going to delete these. Okay, so this is the model that I found in the toolbox. And what I'm going to do is make sure that all of the nets are not collidable. So I can collide unchecked and anchored checked. And then select the frame and make it, so basically the frame of the goal. And make it collidable so can collide true and anchored true now what i'm going to do is cover the uh, model with parts so i'm just going to create a block put it here and i'm going to resize it something like that so that it simulates a net okay that's good I'm going to do the same thing here, copy it, drag it to the left, and then I'm going to duplicate it again, and just do this. And I'm just going to rotate it so that it fits this correctly. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to rotate it again. And move it like so. And then I'm just going to scale it. I'm going to make it a bit thicker. And just... Okay, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is do the same thing for the top. I'm going to change the rotation. The uh, C-frame of the part, the, the orientation to... Um, zero and then I'm going to scale it again okay that is good okay I think that's good enough 
So what I'm going to do is select all the parts that we just added and I'm going to change the transparency to 1. And make sure that can collide is checked and that anchored is also checked. And then I'm going to drag all the parts inside of the soccer goal. Now we have our soccer goal set up. Now I'm going to add another part and I'm going to uh, set the size to 1, 1, 1 and the transparency to 0 0.5 or 1 and the anchored property to true and can collide to false. Now this part is going to be the destination, so I'm going to rename it to destination. And this is where we want the football to reach. So destination, I want to put it somewhere around here. And what I'm going to do is add a script to the workspace. And when adding the script, I'm also going to add a remote event to replicate a storage, remote event. And I'm just going to call it uh, disable or uh, toggle controls okay now what i'm going to do is enter my script again and i'm going to rename it to kick uh football now what i'm going to do is just uh get the get some services so local replicated storage replicated storage is equal to game calling get service replicated storage and then i'm going to get the football so local football is equal to workspace.football and I'm also going to make sure that the football is unanchored sorry actually it should be anchored so local football is equal to workspace.football and what I'm gonna do is local uh, destination is equal to workspace.destination and local that's it that's all we need now what I'm gonna do is add a proximity prompt to the football so just add the proximity prompt and it's going to be uh, i'm going to change the action text of the proximity prompt to kick or maybe shoot and then i'm going to change the hold duration to 0.5 and i'm going to do local prompt is equal to football dot prompt dot proximity prompt so what i'm going to do next is local kick height going to be 30 or whatever you want but i found that 30 is a good number now what i'm going to do is paste in these two functions that i'm going to leave in the description and in the pinned comment because they're kind of complicated to write uh so we just copy and paste them now what i'm going to do is prompt dot triggered connect connect function and that's going to take the player and we're going to get the player's character so local character is equal to player dot character and then we need the humanoid, so local humanoid is equal to character.humanoid. Then we need to get the animator that's inside of the humanoid, local animator is equal to humanoid.animator. And what I'm going to do is add a, an animation to the script. And I'm going to call it... Um, Kick animation and then what I'm gonna do is local animation is equal actually local kick animation is equal to animator colon load animation that's going to take the script dot kick animation and what I'm gonna do next is football dot C frame is equal to and what I'm gonna do is character dot humanoid root part dot c frame uh plus vector three dot new and that's going to be zero comma zero comma negative fifteen and what i'm going to do next is football dot anchored is equal to false and task dot wait one second and uh replicated storage dot toggle controls called fire client that's going to take the player and uh, uh, true I'll, I'll show you what this does later when we script the client and what I'm gonna do then is uh, set the humanoid to walk speed so humanoid, humanoid walk speed is equal to 30 so that the player is fast or actually maybe 25 so that the player runs towards the ball and then humanoid dot walk to point 
is equal to football top position. Now what I'm going to do is wait 0 0.4 seconds. I'm going to mess around with these values later. So uh, then we're going to do kick animation, come and play. And then what we're going to do is uh, get the starting position of the ball. So look at start pause or starting position is equal to and football dot position. Now what I'm going to do is task dot spawn function and uh, for i is equal to from 0 to 1, and each time we're going to go up by 0 0.03, or maybe 0 0.02, do. And what we're going to do is football. By the way, we're going to use this quadratic Bezier function. So uh, football.cframe is equal to, and cframe.new, and quadratic Bezier, i, comma, starting position, start position, comma. Uh, then we're going to get the okay so this takes the starting position and the middle point and the end position now the middle point will be the well the middle point so start position uh plus the destination dot position and we're gonna uh divide the whole thing by two okay so after doing that i'm going to put this whole thing in brackets Actually, we don't need to do that. So divided by two and plus vector. Th so that gets us the middle vector. So plus vector three dot new and zero comma uh, kick height comma zero. So 30 studs up so that the ball goes on the curve uh, comma. And then we just need the uh, destination's position. So destination dot position. Now what I'm going to do is add a task.wait right here, task.wait, I'm going to zoom in, and then what I'm going to do is task.wait one second, and what I'm going to do is just call the toggle controls event again, I'm going to fire their mode event again, but this time it will be false, and what I'm going to do is put the humanoids uh, walk speed back to 16 and uh humanoid walk to point is equal to nil now what i'm gonna do is okay that's that's about it now i'm going to add a script inside a local script inside of start player scripts and i'm going to call it client and what we need to do in the client script is just uh, get the player control so first of all we're gonna get the player service so local players players is equal to game come on get service players and local replicated storage is equal to game come on get service replicated storage then what we need to do is get the players local player is equal to game to players dot local player and local controls is equal to player uh actually require player dot player scripts uh dot player module Con get controls and this just gets a default module that roblox already adds to the player that we can use to disable the player's controls and what i'm going to do is replicate a storage con wait for child toggle controls the on client event con connect function um now this is going to take uh control or bool and what i'm going to do is if bool is equal equal to Okay, so if boom, actually I'm gonna change this to boolean, and I'm gonna check if boolean is equal equal to true, then what we're gonna do is of course, uh, okay, so I'm gonna disable the controls, so call them disable, controls call them disable, else controls call them enable. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and play the game and see if this works. I'm just going to position the ball right here, and I'm going to play the game, and hopefully this is going to work. Okay, so I just spawned in, let's see if we have any errors, none so far, now I'm going to hold E to shoot, and nothing happens. So, load animation requires an asset ID, oh, uh, something I forgot is to select the kick animation, copy the ID that we pasted in here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it 
for the animation ID. Then I'm going to get rid of the folder. Now we're going to play the game again and see if this works. I'm going to wait for my character to load and I'm going to shoot the ball. And as you can see, it plays an animation and it reaches there. Now Vector3 expected. Okay, we're going to fix this. Okay, so I think what we need to do is just uh, humanoid.walk2 point is equal to... Well, we're not going to change this. We're just going to leave it there, I think. Because walk2 point, I think, resets automatically when you try to move. I'm not sure, though. But we're going to see if this works. So, we shoot the ball. And it reaches there. And... It rolls back, but we don't want it to roll like that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to change that. And to do that, I'm just going to mess around with the uh, custom physical properties. So I'll just go down here and check custom physical properties. And I'm just going to mess around with these settings over here. Okay, so I found a couple of issues with this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is select the football and scroll down to custom. Uh, physical properties and check that and change the uh, friction to 2 and the friction weight to 100 and what I'm going to do next is go to the client and instead of doing this what I'm going to do is add colon wait for child player scripts and colon wait for child player module now if you play the game then that should work Oh, I pressed run instead of play. I'm just going to press play. And hopefully this won't error. And it did not. So I'm going to try to shoot the ball. And I cannot move. And now I can move. The ball still rolls. But I think it sh that should slow it down. But it does not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, after kicking the ball, we're going to make it anchored. So, ball or football dot anchored is equal to true. Then we're going to unanchor it. So, football dot anchored is equal to false. After a bit of time. And now if I play the game, then this should work. Okay, E and kicks the ball and it stops, but it rolls down again. So what I'm going to do is just keep it anchored. Okay, so this is going to be the basic system. If you maybe want to make the player get some points or something or coins for... Uh, kicking the football uh, then you can do that but this is just the basic system also you can mess around with the wait times so that it does not it's not delayed like that and also what i need to do is uh change the destination so if i change the destination's position the ball should reach the destination but i think it will get anchored Okay, so to fix that, what I'm going to do is wait for a while. So, task.wait, two seconds. So, just wait for the ball to uh, roll or fall to the ground. Then, we need to anchor the ball. And now, if I do this again, as you can see, it should work. And it stops. Okay, so this works. So, what I'm going to do is um, maybe change the weight. Because I think that this is a bit too much. It's maybe 0 0.3. Maybe 0 0.2. Because I think that the kick animation is played way before that happens. Okay, so I think that's 0 0.3 is good enough. Okay, so that's going to be it for today's tutorial. If this helped, make sure to subscribe, like the video. Share it with your friends and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.